Thank you for being here. Um, um, this is um, the opening for the Apps for Europe. It's a program to turn data into business, supported by the EU. And it uh, coincides uh, with the new law on open data. Uh, how do you think that will support the whole idea of business and open data? Well, absolutely a support for um, with our uh, approach of open data, we are talking about a gold mine for uh, there is so much at stake and a, a great number of opportunities for people to use all those stuff that is in open data. And all those who are keeping the open data for themselves are making a big mistake for uh, it is talking about uh, a growth of economy, of development for jobs, uh, just pushing startups, and uh, it will really make a difference. But what do you think at the moment is is the um, which, which could help to grow the data business? Because uh, at the moment you see a lot of innovation and smart mm -hmm. ideas, a lot of contests, uh, great creative people making sense of data. Uh, but it is also, uh, everything is localized, nothing is really pan-European. How could we bring that to a European uh, level? A lot of communication is at stake, uh, no doubt about that. Let people know and let people realize that it is making sense to open data, to use it wherever and whenever, if it is for private uh, use or for uh, starting a business or for just public use. And that we are aware that in most cases, the taxpayer has already paid for those data. So rightly said, it is all of us uh, involving. It is a great uh, opportunity for pushing the economy. Yeah, because there's uh, so it's not lack of ideas. I think that no. it's there. It's no. been proven yeah. to be to be a great area of innovation. Um, I think what Apps for Europe can provide is the, the, the business launch, like more the meta information, how to price your projects, how mm. to license data, how to make turning it really into a business. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's 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 moving into a direction that it's ideas from one country can sort of scale up to the other country. Uh, do you are you familiar with good practices on the, Do you or do you well, listen to that? In, if, here in the heart of Europe, in Brussels, we are fighting for one single market, and that means a borderless, a, a barrierless uh, market. And having said that, connecting that with open data, then we should indeed not only learn from each other's uh, possibilities and opportunities, but also take advantage of it and make it cross-border. And there, apps can do quite a bit for um, also, the internet is a means where we can say it is, per definition, borderless. For it is, as in a technology, completely uh, crossing borders and no barrier, so to say. But I'm interested in your experience. How did you get involved in this uh, in this sector? Well, it started all back in 1993 when, uh, together with some people from the, the Netherlands, we went to the city of Amsterdam and asked for the data. And they gave it to us on a disk and we put it on the internet. And it was open, it was readable, machine readable and searchable. And um, no so there was- No barrier? So th it was the, the municipality was, uh, was- There was no policy yet. So they, they, okay. we were the first yeah. there to come and they were, were very interested. That there was no internet at that moment. Uh, so we put this information and the data on the digital city. And it was also the first public open access for for citizens. Yeah. And so since then, I, I see myself as looking for data which is closed and try to open it. Yeah. And um, we started the Waag, Waag Society uh, as a research center for social innovation and creative technologies. And open, transparent technologies is one of the key um, areas of research for us. Yeah. So open data is, is one of the main uh, if, uh, elements for, for research, of course. Yeah. What are the main barriers that you are facing in um, your daily activities? Um, I think at the moment it's that if you talk with people within uh, the administration, uh, there are a lot of believers in open data, mm. but they uh, all are struggling with how. 
and and they also sometimes afraid for the consequences uh, because if they open up the data uh, maybe there are some inconsequences between data sets and then other people would find out um, so there is a lot of insecurity still um, I think that's that's is, is growing I think I think this whole ecosystems around open data between creative developers uh, citizens um, administrators people politicians it's 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 growing in its um, it's coming from its infancy to so, sort of a, a place where you could so really talk about what we are actually doing. But a lot of people are just trying out. Yeah. I think is in the cities. Most of the cities are quite uh, far. Mm. Uh, and then now the question is, okay, we have a data set. We want to have real time data. Mm. For example, in <laughs> mobility, <laughs> then the app developers need data that has a high quality. Yeah. So I think we are sort of, uh, sort of, well, we have to go beyond the first attempts yeah. for open data. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't be uh, allowed to be risk avoiding for, uh, well, um, and I'm of course not pleading for a lot of risk, mm -hmm. but if you are not daring to take an initiative, then um, it is stopping a development and sooner or later it will be there. Yeah. So let's uh, indeed together uh, make it a success. Yeah. But I, I, I love the initiatives with the hacking in the city halls, mm -hmm. like we will have on the 29th of June in, in Amsterdam in the city yeah. hall. And I think that's, that's, that's really a new way of, of making pol politics and making, yeah. making democracy even. It, it's, yeah. it's a very open environment that everybody sort of steps in and can be insecure or become secure yeah. in, its, in its working. But uh, one of the questions to me would be like beyond the PDF. So there is a lot of open information, but it's not always machine readable. So it's not always that you can make real new um, uh, qualities out of the data. And I think so that we we still have to have a bit more ambition, I guess, mm. uh, in in Europe, not on the on the higher level, because I've, I'm, I'm, we are very happy with the with the law and and also mm. your your uh, vision on this, but on the local level. People have to be, I think, have to be a little bit more ambitious. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, it's quite fascinating, anyhow, for me, that the younger generation, and really the younger, they are open for all those opportunities, and they are rocking the boat. Um, uh, I'm delighted to have a couple of them as my advisor. Yeah. For, um, of course, it's, it's great to have a couple of uh, professors or whatever, but the real guys and girls who are uh, aware of what's going on are of an age that they are not yet professor. Yeah, well, well, I think it's very interesting that they 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 can they take open as default. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they they consider mm -hmm. they don't can't understand why it should not yeah. should not be open, yeah. and that's of course it's another approach. But they they are born in the internet, so they yeah. they have the skills and the and the curiosity. Mm -hmm. Um, so they could help a lot of people yeah. that are still sort of trying to figure out what it means for them. Yeah. Yeah. But I've, and then the, what I also I think is interesting and would like your opinion on that as well. If we say turning data into business, uh, it's also social innovation. So it's also oh, yeah. sometimes societal uh, business, mm -hmm. as we could, could speak. <laughs> And do you believe in the social enterprise as part of this sort of movement? Well, it's quite often a combination. So uh, anyhow, it is a great opportunity talking about the youth unemployment in Europe. This is really giving an excellent instrument for people to plan their own life, so to say. And uh, that is still, of course, um, not enough for tackling the whole uh, number of uh, unemployed uh, youngsters. But if you are looking what the opportunities are, then this is great. And then it's quite often starting on the, the edge of this type of world. And it will develop in, in different forms. So quite interesting what's going on. Yeah. Do you think that it, education is ready for this, <laughs> for the for the young kids? Because uh, I still think there's not so much technology savviness in the school system. Well, <coughs> uh, you are touching upon a, a very interesting uh, issue. The kids and even the very young ones, they are not only willing and able, but they are also highly interested. In some schools, there is excellent infrastructure. 
uh, not in all, so we still have to give that an eye to. But it is quite often the teachers who are not um, able, they are willing, but they are not able to uh, compete with that whole new, new development. They didn't get that in their educational package, so to say. So we we have to give a real great uh, part of our attention to uh, teaching the, um, the teachers in just linking with those new opportunities and possibilities. And another issue, and I learned that last week in Dublin where we had a digital uh, assembly uh, from the digital uh, champion of Ireland, uh, Lord Putnam, uh, the famous Lord Putnam, mm -hmm. and great that he did accept that digital championship. And he was pleading for, please, talking about copyright, please let the classroom be free of those obligations of copyright. If we would be successful in that and a couple of other areas, and if we could tackle the copyright issue, uh, and the sooner the better, in the classroom, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Now you're referring to this flipping the classroom, yeah. The, yeah. the Khan Academy, like yeah. putting yeah. putting the, the yeah. yeah. I've, I've, and also um, the capacity of, of teachers and scholars together yeah. to create the contents of course. for learning. Yeah. It, it's, it's of course so, so many talent is not being used yeah. in this case mm -hmm. because we're still fixed to the, to the yeah. publisher's model. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lord Putnam, he had an uh, excellent clip and it's worthwhile to, uh, to have that one. And he was showing that with, for, for example, surgeons, we, when we are comparing someone from 1930 or, um, and compare it with his colleague of today, that's a complete different world. And even if you don't take 1930, but a bit later. But if you are talking about the teacher, it's quite often the same type of approach of the teacher at that time compared to what they are doing now. And then you are not using all the opportunities and the development that is yeah. at stake. Yeah. So a lot to do, but also fascinating what could be done. Yeah. We're only at the starting point of all that. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Because there's a, a, um, uh, also a competition for primary schools called um, uh, Meester App. Yeah. And um, in the Netherlands, and it's, it's, it's amazing. There so many people apply to it. So many kids have ideas how, how, the, how the education yeah. system should change and how app, apps could help with that. It's, it's, it's quite remarkable. And, and, and I think we are just only on the, on the threshold in, in using all the capacities that we have in, in, in Europe. Do, do you think we could make a... Uh, because uh, concepts like Khan Academy still are, are also uh, <coughs> concepts that come from the US. Do you do you see any real European um, DNA in, in the in the open data movement and the app, the app movement? Yes, of course. For <coughs> our people are as interested as people from elsewhere of the globe. But talking about education, and that is one of the issues that um, we have to recognize that education is not one of those uh, issues that are dealt with in a European Commission. Education and talking about subsidiarity, it is up to the national governments. And of course, we are following uh, the whole development, trying to just hook in, in at certain elements. But um, we should be aware that if in a certain member state there is a development that is worthwhile to follow up in other ones, that we should use that and not ring fans because it's subsidiarity. Yeah. There is this, um, as, as you said, um, it, it, it's also a lot about the, the IP issues and, and yep. the intellectual property rights. So that's something, of course, where the European can yep. take a stand and, and, and make policy. Um, maybe just to touch upon like our trust in the systems, because we is open data. Some people feel that their data should not be open uh, because they, they've, they, they really need a, an idea, a concept of privacy or, or sovereignty. Um, how would you, uh, does this harm, I mean, does this, the, the, the prism and all the stories about how it's being looked into the data also of Europeans, does it harm this movement? Do we still trust the cloud, for example? 
I sincerely hope that uh, that we are trusting uh, the cloud, for it is a great opportunity, and especially talking about lowering cost, and uh, especially talking about, for example, small enterprises. If you are using the cloud, it makes a lot of difference in what you have to spend for this type of uh, storing. And uh, of course, that also gives us a extra uh, drive to be more aware, and we are already uh, aware, of course, but even doing more our utmost to give uh, certainty or more uh, feelings of positive trust and positive security. Um, mm -hmm. And nothing in life is 100% secure. Uh, even if you are leaving uh, this stage, then it's not 100% uh, safe that you won't fall for if you are not using <laughs> your eyes and um, your, your feeling. But uh, it is, of course, talking about cloud, absolutely a great opportunity. And we should be active in that. And talking about um, trust and, and security, uh, thinking of how you could deal with that in Europe is one of the priorities now. Mm -hmm. And also taking the point that we should be a, a bit consistent for saying that's me and nothing and so on. That's not working for you are using and you are uh, absolutely acting with your own um, uh, your own issues in a way that you are sharing and joining. So, and liking. And, and li but here we are. <laughs> so it shouldn't be too much double, so to say. Mm -hmm. yeah, because if you, if you look at the quantified self movement where people sort of measure themselves and put all kind of yeah. very, very private data online, mm -hmm. yeah. they all do this just, yeah. just by themselves. Yeah. It's not even the government yeah. that asks no, them. No, but therefore yeah. I'm always saying, come on, look at Facebook and look what you are sharing and joining. Yeah. So uh, sometimes um, a principle is getting out of the context and then it's not really working well. And I'm of course very much in favor for um, being aware what is done with my stuff, but in a way that is reality. But could we, could we, to, to all this social media, all this system, all these great apps that is going to to make make our life more uh, happier or help healthier yeah. or challenging, uh, challenging. Yeah. Is there a way to 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 ask the, uh, to to make sure that the companies that provide these apps and these services uh, are looking uh, more ca uh, more careful with our information? For, for example, the term reciprocity, that we know yeah. what's going on yeah. in the system, that we have access well, to their own systems? Yeah. Anyhow, it should be a transparent and predictable uh, issue. For um, If I'm aware what's going to happen, then it's up to me how I will act and so on. So don't blame the other one, but when you don't get the information, then of course it is, uh, to put it at least, it's irritating. Yeah. So what um, what can we expect from 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 you in in the in, in the area of open data? Are there still new uh, initiatives coming from Europe? Uh, are you working on maybe specific things? Well, we are pushing it, and yeah. we are just pushing it in a way that um, it is acceptable. We, we will deal with it in uh, Parliament, we will deal uh, with it in, in the College, uh, in the Commission. So uh, we, are, uh, we are going ahead and being aware that it is of main importance to get that gold mine available for people. Okay, great. Well, in, uh, Apps for Europe just started in, in February. We have this great event, this big hackathon with the business lounge yeah. uh, uh, supported by the European Commission and uh, in March there will be this big gathering of all the people that are dealing with open open data of all, all around Europe in um, in Manchester uh, mm -hmm. at, um, at a big event so maybe you or other people you're welcome and uh, thank you for your time thank you and a lot of success thank you very yeah. much